Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Digital Toolkit Series. This is the fourth installment of uh, a four-part series with, in collaboration with the um, Office of Information Technology. Today's topic will be on atomic learning. And just before I move forward, I want to make sure that my voice is being heard clearly. So, Lori, if you could type in the chat box, um, if you can hear me and if you can see our slides, that would be good. Excellent. Okay, again, welcome to our webinar today. Uh, we'd like to begin by letting you know that this webinar is being recorded. We'd like to do that so that we can add these videos to our resources list and also so that we can send you a link to the recording after the webinar has ended. You won't be required to speak using a microphone or you won't be able to uh, use your webcam, but you can certainly chat with us using the chat feature at the bottom right hand corner. Uh, we will have time for question and answer at the end, so if you could hold your questions, that would be good. Um, and definitely jot them down so that uh, you can revisit them at the end with us. So today your facilitators are myself, Kayla Gorey. I'm the project coordinator in the Office of Online Learning here at Mount St. Mary College. And I'm joined by John Atuma, who is the IT technology trainer from the Office of Information Technology. First, we will talk a little bit about what atomic learning is um, and what kind of service it provides all faculty, students, and staff here at the college. Jana will do that introduction. She will also discuss how to search for video resources to share with students or if you're a staff member looking for um, some kind of tutorial on a topic, the types of resources that atomic learning offers. And then I'll jump into how those uh, resources can be added to your eClass course seamlessly. We'll also discuss some considerations to make if you are going to be sharing them through your eClass course. And then lastly, we'll do some question and answer. So at this point, I'm going to hand it off to Jana, who will talk to a little bit about what atomic learning is. OK, thank you. Um, Mount St. Mary subscribes to atomic learning, uh, which offers access to a vast library of online videos uh, relating to technology, student engagement, career readiness, and instructional practices. You'll find to topics that may be interested, that you may be interested in learning more about. Uh, you'll find topics that may be helpful tutorials for your students and uh, also topics that may enhance your course. Uh, so we're gonna, I'm gonna jump right into a demo right now. So I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so the way the okay, I think you can hear me. <laughs> so the way to access Atomic Learning um, video library is go to the portal, and on the resources tab, um, under the academic section, is right here Atomic Learning. Uh, the link is right here, so that all students, faculty, and staff can actually use it outside of an E-class course. Uh, so uh, all of these videos are not just for courses and um, for student learning. It's also for uh, professional development, maybe as a refresher for a piece of software um, uh, or short little tutorial. So that's why we also have it, act, you can also access Atomic Learning from this screen and not just from eClass. So I'm going to click on it. And it's going to automatically log me into uh, Mount St. Mary College's instance of um, Atomic Learning. Um, you're logged in using your MSMC account. Now, you can't go to atomiclearning.com and log in. Um, it won't, um, it won't uh, recognize you. You have to go in through the portal for the links to work and for you to have access to Atomic Learning. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that you can view all the atomic learning videos at any time, anywhere, and on any device. So that's always a nice feature. So when you first get into atomic learning, the first thing you'll see is this Discover tab. Um, they'll add um, the newly added uh, video series are here, and once you start looking around and get used to this product, you'll always want to check to see what what um, 
new videos have been added. If you want to narrow it down and uh, see what's under software and technology, you just click over here under this software and technology button. And you can just browse around here just to see what some of the topics are that are covered. Uh, there's also a student resources tab that you can check just to see what may be of interest to your students. Here's effective note taking tips. Um, here's evaluating web resources and you can continue on just to get an idea and browse around. It's kind of like window shopping. You could see what may be interested to, interesting to you or to your students. There's also tabs up here if you want to also look around for instructional strategies and also so for online teaching and blended learning, if you want to learn any more uh, about that. Um, so that's a way to just look around to see what, what, even, what atomic learning actually offers you. Um, if you know what you're going to look for, it, what kind of videos you want, you could go to the search tab and you can um, directly type in whatever it is that you're looking for. So for example, if you wanted to know about MLA style for research papers, I'll just type that in directly, and it comes up with a, a list of possible uh, video series that I would want to look at. I'm going to look at the first one. I wanted to show you that it's the whole video series is 55 minutes and it's broken up into 41 tutorials. So let's open that one up. Okay, so all the tutorials are uh, usually divided into categories or sections. You can open them up. You can start with the first one and then just work your way through all of the tutorials. Uh, if you notice over here on the side, all the tutorials are less than two minutes at this in this particular series. So they always try to make them less than three minutes. So that's really nice um, to get you through your uh, series a lot quicker. Um, now you don't have to start at the top and work your way through everything. You could just go directly to a section that you may be interested in. If you wanted to know about uh, footnotes, you could just go here, just look at those two videos. Or if you just wanted to know how to do a web page citation and you needed an example, you could just go here and go to the web page. Um, so in this case, this is only 55 seconds and it'll show me how to do a web page citation. Okay, so the really nice thing about atomic learning videos, <clears throat> excuse me, is that they're designed to be standalone videos. You don't have to watch the uh, all of the videos from the beginning to the end. You don't need to watch the one before it or the one after it. You could just pick a video and watch that video, learn what you need to know, and then move on. So that's the one nice thing about atomic learning videos uh, versus some of the other tools that are out there. Okay. <clears throat> Let me just go back to my list that I had. Okay, so I'm still on the search tab. So the another way, if you don't want to type it in directly, uh, whatever it is that you're looking for, there's these advanced filters over here on the side. So let me show you the advanced filters. When you click on the advanced filters, you'll see that you can search by application. So this is all different types of software. So if you go down this list, you'll notice there's the Adobe products, uh, Dropbox is down here, uh, Camtasia is here, EasyGrade, Word, Excel, uh, YouTube is down on the bottom. So you can actually search by application just to see what's out there. Another way you can search for topics is by this, the middle option, all topics. You drop down that. Um, you'll see there's assessment here. You can learn about blogs, calculators, cameras, um, there's gaming out here, there's fluency. So there's a lot of different types of topics that you may want to uh, explore a little bit more and see which videos uh, series are attached to them. 
And then the last one is all categories. If you are interested, you can uh, click and look at the workshops or the projects or the how-to tutorials that are out there. Or you can even narrow down your search to just videos that highlight um, uh, the use of a Mac. So those are the three ways to start to get into atomic learning and find videos that you uh, may be interested in or that may be good for your students. You would use the Discover tab, the search where you type it in directly, or where you'd use the advanced filters. So I'm going to do a search for G Suite, see what shows up. Okay, so for G Suite, uh, I have two options that showed up. Um, I'm going to show you the second one, the Gmail training option, and I'm just going to open that one up. Okay, so this is one type of training, and that's what I also showed you previously. It's just a bunch of videos, and you can either choose to start from the beginning and watch them all through, all the way to the end, or you can go to a category, or you can just go directly to one particular uh, video to watch. Now Kayla is going to show you how to get these videos into eClass, but I also wanted to show you how you can grab the links to these videos, because you may need to email them to someone, or put them in a syllabus, or put them on a web page, or even add them to social media. So you may want to use these videos outside of a class. So the way to send them to someone or to share them is to go to this easy links um, button up here on the top. I can check all and that will send the whole series to someone. Let me clear them. Or I could just choose something in particular that I wanted to show someone. Okay, so you choose what videos you want to show or share with other people. I'm going to say preview easy links right here. Now in this case, the links are all set up. I just have to do press control C if I'm in Windows to copy it or command C if I'm on a Mac. And then I would just go to my email or my web page or wherever I want to put it and do paste. If you know anything about HTML and you're interested in to, to getting the HTML code, you could click on this link here and it will give you the HTML code that you can embed into a web page. But if you don't know about HTML, don't worry about it. Just grab the links here by doing Control C if you're in Windows. Okay, so I'm going to close that, but I just wanted to show you that that's another way to share videos and to share links um, with other people. Let me go back to my G Suite list. Okay, so this Gmail training one was a bunch of videos, uh, one right after the other that you can watch. Um, this Google Apps for Education, this one is actually an example of some new training that Atomic Learning is developing. It's called Who Knew It? And it includes student engagement and assessment. So these are new, and uh, so I wanted to show you. They're pretty nice. So the uh, idea is there's this Learn It button, and down here are all the videos uh, so that uh, somebody can step through the videos and learn the material. The do it is actually an activity that the student can do um, after they learned it to make sure they got it right. So it's a nice little activity. Share it. They can actually upload that activity to a community to get feedback. And then prove it is for an assessment where they actually get a score and a certificate of completion. So this is a new type of um, video series that Atomic Learning is uh, building more and more, and I just wanted to show it to you because it's really, really nice. Okay, so those are the two different types of video series you might see, the straight video or the who knew it one.
Now, if you like those Who Knew It uh, uh, tools where they have the engagement and the assessment, you can find more of them this, under Advanced Filters. And under All Topics, if you hit that drop down, it's actually this one right here. Who Knew It is spelt a little unusual. <laughs> but you go to the Who Knew It Learning Modules. And these are all the ones that you may want to browse um, that have student engagement and assessment in it. So there's a lot of them out there. There's five pages of them. Uh, how to be a better test taker, how to be a better note taker, how to be an effective listener. So there's some interesting ones here that may uh, you may want to use to enhance your class or to recommend to some students who might need the extra help. Uh, once you start looking around atomic learning, I think you're going to be surprised at what you're going to discover. And, and um, I hope you do go back and visit it. So that's about all I have. Um, I showed you how to access the atomic learning from the portal. You use the search in the discover and the advanced filters to find videos. Uh, there's two types of videos, the ones that straight videos that you watch them from the top to the bottom or you just zero in on a particular video that you may want to watch or there's that new one, the who, uh, who knew it. And also remember that you can share links to these videos and send them out to other people outside of eClass. Uh, but now I will hand it off to Kayla and she's going to show you how to access the videos in eClass so that you can add it to your course. So let me stop my sharing. Okay, Kayla. Thanks, Jonna. Can everybody see my screen now? Sharing. It says Intro to World Religions. Okay, perfect. So let's say you were in atomic learning via the way that uh, Jonna just introduced, and you saw a resource that you'd like for your students to view. Um, an easy way to do it without having to share a link, like Jonna described, would be to actually integrate it into your eClass course directly. Um, it's fairly simple, straightforward process. So I have a mock course here. This is not an actual live course. This is just a mock course that's going to demonstrate what the, that process looks like. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. I have a pre-designed one that I put here, and ironically, it happens to be the same MLA uh, video suite that Jana just used, which we did not plan, by the way. <laughs> um, so this is what that looks like here. Uh, this is what your students would see once you've uh, actually added a suite to your course. Um, the reason I wanted to show you one before I actually demonstrate one is to kind of show you uh, what the students would see from their point of view. So uh, in this particular example, uh, like I said, I'm using the MLA tutorial. Um, and I've also provided a little bit of information here for the students to read before they even click on it. And it says, all of your, re all of your research papers must be written using the MLA citation style. Please watch all videos in sections A through G of the tutorial suite and take the built-in self-assessments before Monday, September 18th. That's just an example. You can get quite detailed um, in your directions. So that's just an example of what that could look like. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the link. And once that loads, it'll show you uh, what the videos um, look like. It's very similar looking to the way that Jonna just showed us. And, and uh, you'll see that the different sections, just like Jonna showed us, the different sections are listed. So if you scroll down, you'll be able to see sections A through G, I think. They go all the way to G in this particular example. You'll also see that um, each section has an assessment. So as Jonna noted, um, they're getting a little more interactive and engaging, so they're adding assessments to things. And so if this is a particular topic that you want your students to be well-versed in, that could certainly be an option for you. So now that you've seen uh, what it looks like from a student perspective, I'm going to show you as the instructor how to actually add one to your course and also um, kind of how to customize it because they can be customizable. So I'm going to hop back to my course here. As with anything in eClass, the first thing that we need to do is enable our editing. So I'm going to scroll back to the top of my course and I'm going to select the Edit On button. 
Now this has enabled the editing features of my course. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click add an activity or resource. This will open up a new box for me to choose uh, what I'd like to add. In this case, there isn't actually an option that says atomic learning, um, like a few others you see are more direct here. We're actually going to choose the external tool option. And this allows us to integrate what's called LTIs, or learning tools interoperability. Um, those are plugins, basically, that uh, we have purchased as a college. And one of them happens to be atomic learning. So we're going to select external tool, and then you're going to select add. And this will bring up a new page where you'll be able to add an activity name. So uh, let's say that you want to add some tutorials about um, Microsoft Word. That's a good example. I'm going to give it a little name, Word 2016 Tutorials. You can call it whatever you'd like, but usually if you're a little more direct um, and a little more pointed, that's helpful for the student. So they know exactly what they're about to open. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to choose the external tool type. If you open that web, uh, the menu, you'll see the option for Atomic Learning. You're going to select Atomic Learning. And then um, the other thing that you want to consider is how you want it to display for your students. There's a couple different options. Uh, typically, we would recommend the embed option for things. But in this case, I'm actually going to recommend the option to open it in a new window. This is because when you choose the embed option for this particular tool, it comes out looking a little condensed, or it could come out looking a little condensed, depending on what type of web browser you're using or the student settings of their computer. So in order to um, kind of avoid any issues with display, I'm going to recommend the new window option. This will um, this will happen. Uh, this will make it happen so that the atomic learning videos actually happen in a new web browser altogether, and it'll open up a new window for the student. If you click Show More, you'll see something familiar, um, likely familiar. This is where you can add a description of the activity. So in my MLA example. I said uh, that we'd be using the MLA citation style, and I'd like for my students to uh, watch all of the videos in that suite by September 18th. This is the area that I added that text to. So I'm going to add a short description here. You will use Microsoft Word to produce papers and essays. Please familiar yourself with Word 2016. Pretty straightforward. If you'd like for that description to display right under the link to that uh, option, you want to make sure that this checkbox is checked, Display Description on Course Page. OK, and then all of these other things you can actually disregard altogether. Those are the main things that you want to pay attention to. So I'm going to click Save and Return to Course. Notice I haven't actually chosen any videos yet. That's the next step. So now we've added the plugin to our course. Here it is at the bottom. And just like anything in eClass, you can move it around if you'd like it to be further up or if you'd like to remain in the same place, that's totally fine too. Um, so this is the part where you're actually going to go in and select the actual tutorial that you'd like to be displayed. So the way to do that is to click on the link. And just like Jana had shown us, uh, we can directly search for something by entering a keyword. So I'm going to put in Word 2016. Let me find one that's pretty general. I think I saw one here earlier. OK, here we go. Word 2016 for PC. So say this is the tutorial I'd like to share with my students. So I'm going to click the Content, Add Content button. And here we go. Here is the entire suite of videos. And you'll notice by default, all videos are checked. All assessments are checked. If you'd like to uh, remove the assessment option, you can simply uncheck the All Assessments button. And that will uncheck the assessments within every section. But if you think that's useful for your students, just leave it checked. Um, you can also individually uncheck items. So if there is something that you don't think is pertaining to your students or you'd not like them to see, you can do that by item, or you can do it by an entire section. 
So let's say I'd like my students to just view the videos in section A and take the assessment, um, section B and section C. And all of these other things, maybe I'd like them to maybe view another time or they're just not applicable. So um, I'm just going to uncheck that because it's a little easier for me to go through and just check three things rather than unchecking multiple. And I think that's what I'd like to show them. So I'm going to click Submit at the top right corner. And this will save um, your settings for the tutorials that you'd like for your students to view. So now I'm going to go back to my actual course. And I'm going to view this course as a student so that you can see again what this looks like from their vantage point. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. And here you'll see uh, my Word 2016 tutorial link. You'll also see the description here that I gave. You will use Microsoft Word to produce papers and essays. Please familiarize yourself with Word. Upon clicking on the link, it'll open up the Atomic Learning Video Suite. And because I'm looking at it from a student perspective, I no longer have that edit or submit button, as you may notice. And I'm only seeing the videos that my instructor has chosen for me to see, I'm not seeing anything beyond that. So that's very useful. Um, you can be quite selective in what you'd like your students to see. And so pretty straightforward on how to add one to your eClass course. I'm going to go back to my slides. So just give me one moment. Okay, so now that we've covered the actual how-tos, how do we add one to our eClass course, there's just a few considerations that um, I'd like for everybody to know when they're using this plugin in eClass. So again, we just want to make sure that we're setting it to open a new window rather the, than the embed option. As I described, the embed option just may not work on every PC um, that your students may be using because of different settings on their own computers. So the new window option is the best way to avoid any um, technical issues, so to speak. The only consideration about that that you may want to let your students know or discuss with them is that they may need to enable their pop-up feature within their web browser because it is opening a new window. And depending on their pop-up settings, they may have them completely disabled and they may not be able to actually open it. So if that ever comes across from a student, um, you, you would be able to tell them that they need to uh, enable their pop-ups. And if they have any concerns or questions or need assistance of any kind, they can certainly consult with the IT help desk on um, their web browser settings. They would certainly be able to help with those things. So at this time, uh, we would like to open it up for any question and answer um, that you may have. Um, if Jonna is the more appropriate person to answer, I'll certainly hand it over to her. If your question pertains more to eClass or anything functionality-wise with the plugin, um, I'd be happy to answer those questions. If you do have any questions, you can use the chat feature at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. And while I'm waiting for those questions to come in, um, I'd just like to point out that we have our contact information here for both the Office of Online Learning and the Office of Information Technology. Um, we are two separate offices, although sometimes people do think we're kind of lumped into one big space. We're actually separate. Um, so the Office of Online Learning has its own contact information, its own staff, um, and that information is here, as well as the Office of Information Technology. Um, if you have any questions about eClass, uh, certainly contact the Office of Online Learning. And for information technology, it's pretty much everything else. <laughs> if you're having um, any issues with your computer or any issues with any programs on your computer, um, Wi-Fi or printing, or if you would like some basic technical training with Jana, those are the folks you'd like to contact. Does anybody have any questions for us?
I saw Lori was typing, but I don't see that anymore. Oh, here it comes. Okay, Lori says, thanks. This definitely adds more resources for students and may reduce student searching for things on their own. Absolutely. Um, and actually, Jonna can speak more to this, but I think that atomic learning has been around at the college for a little while now. Um, although the plug into eClass is fairly new, um, atomic learning as a service has been around. So it's a good opportunity for instructors to know that this is available for for students, but also even staff and faculty um, just for basic training on any software or, or uh, general topics like instructional design or even on there. So it's a very good service that the college offers and we're, we're happy to share it. <laughs> okay, well if that's it, if nobody has any questions, oh, I see John is typing, so I'll just give her a moment. Okie dokie, everybody. I think that's it. Um, if nobody has any other questions or comments, uh, I'll wrap this up today. Thank you again for joining us on our last installment of our Digital Toolkit series. Um, look more in the future. We'll definitely be offering more, I'm sure, maybe in the fall semester. Um, those will be announced via email, and usually they're also put on our website, onlinelearning.msmc.edu. And sometimes you may even see them advertised on the eClass homepage on the banner there. Uh, we try to advertise our upcoming events, webinars, workshops, and such all there as well for instructors, students, and staff to see. I see John is typing. I'll give her a moment. John, if it's easier, you can definitely use your mic if you'd rather you do that. 